In part B, we discuss stem cells and the difference between embryonic stem cells and the stem cells found in uh, adult individuals. And we will also touch on the legal and ethical issues that revolve around cloning and stem cell technologies. First, what are stem cells? These are undifferentiated cells that can keep dividing, so uh, to replenish the cells in our body that wear out regularly, such as the cells of our intestinal lining, the uh, skin cells, and our blood cells, we have to have a population of cells that for our entire lives retain the potential to keep dividing and to keep differentiating um, where some of their progeny keep uh, are able to differentiate to replenish those differentiated cell populations. We can classify stem cells according to their degree of differentiation potential. Totipotent are such as the cells of um, the early stage embryo. Totipotent cells are able to produce any cell in the body. Okay? And a totipotent cell then still has the capability of essentially producing an entire human being. Pluripotent stem cells are able to produce many different si types of cells, but not necessarily all different types of cells. And then we get progressively more restricted. Oligopotent, several, multipotent, uh, still less, and unipotent, only one type of cell. <coughs> so here's a, uh, a diagram from the NIH that shows uh, some of the uh, stem cells in our body. The bone marrow is uh, a particularly rich source of stem cells. Here is a, a, an oligopotent or perhaps pluripotent uh, stem line, the hematopoietic stem cells. These stem cells are able to give rise to all of the cells in our blood, not just red blood cells, but the many different types of immune system white cells, uh, as well as platelets um, and other phagocytic cells. And then there are other cells, um, kinds of uh, <coughs> stem cells that produce other uh, uh, types of cells, even our fat cells. So these differ in um, their uh, degree of uh, potential. So hematopoietic stem cells, for instance, in this lineage, have the greatest degree of, of differentiation potential. Um, and then we get to progressively less and less uh, progressively more and more restricted stem cells. For instance, the lymphoid progenitor cells can only produce uh, B cells and T cells and NK cells, whereas the myeloid progenitor cell can only produce um, these types of cells. This uh, progressive restriction of uh, differentiation potential really begins during embryogenesis. Okay, it's the fertilized zygote is of course totipotent and the two cell stage consists again of two totipotent st uh, cells. At this stage, at the two cell stage, it's possible to split the embryo in half and get two genetically identical individuals. In fact, um, genetically identical twins arise by the two cell stage embryo splitting. And it turns out um, that four cell stage embryos are still totipotent, and probably up through this uh, uh, multi cell stage that we call a morula. Now, the morula at some point undergoes compaction. And so you can see the uh, difference in the appearance. Uh, this is before compaction, and this is after compaction. And after compaction is when we see the first restriction of differentiation potential. These cells on the outside of a compacted morula are able to make only the extra embryonic cells. That's the placenta and the trophectoderm. The cells of the inner uh, become 
in the blastocyst stage embryo, the cells of the inner cell mass, and these actually form the body of the embryo. Okay, so the, the, the fetus forms from the inner cell mass, the, uh, the outer layer of cells form the trophectoderm and placenta. Now, having said that, these cells in uh, the inner cell mass are capable of producing any cell in the adult body. <coughs> this shows you what happens naturally. The previous diagram is what, uh, as you can see from uh, the photos, happen in vitro. In vivo, uh, the natural uh, fertilization way, fertilization of the oocyte occurs <coughs> here, and after the oocyte is fertilized, it, it travels um, through the uh, canal. Um, uh, as it divides, uh, forms the morella stage, compacts, forms the blastocyst stage, stage embryo, and then the blastocyst stage embryo hatches from um, the zona pellucida and implants into the uterine wall. Now, I emphasize that this implantation of the uterine wall is absolutely necessary for further embryonic development. Again, the, in, in vitro, the blastocyst stage embryo is as far as uh, mammalian embryo differentiation goes. If the blastocyst stage embryo <coughs> Uh, is not implanted into the uterus, no further development uh, occurs, the blastocyst stage embryo will eventually die. <coughs> so then the, the whole idea of developing stem cells for therapy is that it's very difficult um, to even find adult stem cells. And as you recall, adult stem cells have limited uh, differentiation potential. So to alleviate that problem, the whole idea then is to use embryonic stem cells or to create embryonic stem cells. So we use um, the same technology as used for embryon reproductive cloning you have to have a mammalian egg cell. So for human medicine, um, it would be take a human egg. The oocyte, the nucleus is removed. <coughs> you take um, cells from a patient's own body, a somatic cell from the patient, and you take the nucleus and implant it into um, the enucleated egg. And uh, using in vitro uh, fertilization technology, get the egg to divide, form an early um, stage embryo, but instead of implanting it into the uh, uterus of a, a human female, what we do is we destroy this embryo, harvest the inner cell mass cells, and create an embryonic stem cell culture. Now we have a culture of embryonic stem cells, which are essentially totipotent, capable of forming any cell in the body, which has the exact same genotype as the patient. So there is no problem with tissue rejection. Then these stem cells can be manipulated using growth factors and differentiation factors to produce any uh, cell type in the body, from neurons to heart muscle, to pancreatic beta islet cells to cure a number of degenerative diseases. <coughs> so I'm really not going to talk about part B here. So um, part A is the whole um, controversy over creating embryonic stem cells because people who believe that life begins at uh, conception or fertilization um, have issues and ethical problem with the part here that involves destruction of this cloned human embryo.
Now, there is an alternative. Very recently, over the past few years, scientists have discovered that they can take ordinary somatic cells, we can take skin cells, uh, fibroblasts, other types of um, cells from an adult human body, and perform genetic manipulations. This is transformation, and genetic transformation. You um, add in activated genes that can achieve reprogramming of the somatic cell nucleus and turn it into an embryonic stem cell-like state. And this is called induced pluripotent stem cell. And this gives you more information. Okay. The induced pluripotent stem cells <coughs> were first uh, described in 2008. This is one of two papers that were published at the same time. They use retroviral vectors, um, or they used retroviral vectors, to introduce four transcription factor genes, okay. uh, including a proto oncogene. Uh, and when they did that, these uh, recipients or uh, transformed cells became embryonic stem cell-like uh, in terms of their gene expression pr profile uh, and pluripotency. Uh, they were able to form all major tissue types and even uh, were able to form sperm cells and egg cells. In fact, this has become such a promising approach as um, people have gotten this to work with many different types of cells that uh, uh, most recently a company that was uh, involved in developing human embryonic uh, stem cell lines um, quit and went completely over to developing induced pluripotent stem cells.